From the Schmoes No Network Studios in Los Angeles, California, it's time for Box Office Breakdown, where all the weekend numbers get chewed up, analyzed, and spit back in your face. And now, here's your host, the lovely Sarah Stratton, the diabolical finsta, and every man's hero, J-T-E. Oof. There we go. Hi, guys. Hello, Schmoville. Welcome back to Box Office Breakdown. I'm Sarah Stratton, and I'm joined with the wonderful JTE. I'm very, very proud much, of Sarah. currently. And Finstock. Ha. 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 Yeah. We went from, is ha a new, a new yeah. word? Is yeah. that inspired by, like, Halloween? To me, or? Yeah, Halloween. <laughs> Wonderful. How was your That's great. Before we get into breaking down the numbers, especially this week, which was... It's been a Oof. heated morning. Lots of debates. Uh, yeah. Lots of controversy. Before we get into that, how was everyone's Halloween? Oh, ours was pretty good. I mean, Friday I went down to the parade, which was crazy. Really fun. That's the West Hollywood. Yeah. Oh, the West Hollywood yeah, parade. Yeah, there's like, like, like 750,000 people there. It's a madhouse. Yeah. I was the coolest guy. I went as Finstock, obviously. <laughs> Actually, somebody's like, who are you? I'm like, oh, I'm Bob Finstock. They're like, who's that? I'm like, this, you know, this big internet Twitter celebrity. I'm not. But I said I was. And I'm like, yeah, it's number one fans. Did I'm you like, yeah, you check him out on Twitter. People? Yeah. I was like, yeah, check him out on Twitter at Bob Finstock. I love how he said I'm, he was the coolest guy there. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. That's, great. that's clear. How about you? That's clear. What'd you do? Uh, I'm living vicariously through everyone else because I was working. What? Oh. I know. Halloween? Yeah. Wow, the Keanu Reeves yeah. coming there again? Wait, did you go dressed up? I was wearing. I did. Oh, I dressed up. Okay. Of course. I've had four costumes this year. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, we were at Kamikaze. <laughs> yeah, Saturday. I went to Kamikaze actually the night before. Well, we went Saturday morning. I went yeah. Halloween night, which was kind of crazy because everyone was dressed everywhere. And uh, it was everyone really was cool. Everyone was dressed everywhere? Well, because it was Halloween night. So not only were you like in the convention surrounded by people in cosplay, yeah. but when uh-huh. you went back outside, everyone else was still dressed up. And I was like, oh, this is crazy. Yeah, it's pretty scary. There's a lot of guys with like guns in the street. It was, mm. I mean, you're like, is that real? Because you never know when somebody's just going to be like, ha ha, I'm kidding and shoot everybody. Let me tell you something. I drive. Don't say things <laughs> like that. <laughs> That's horrible. You're ruining the holiday. I, I mean, I don't know. It's weird. I take the Metro. The Metro is a scary place when it's not Halloween. When it's Halloween, it's just, you, you can't tell who's wearing a costume and who's not sometimes. That's true. It's insane. I think you guys are just trying to bring down the mood. No, I went to the guy. I was like, dude, you're a great zombie. Like, you look scary. He's like, I'm homeless. Yeah. And I was like, Poof. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, well, I got kicked out of Hooters, too, at, by the Coliseum. What'd you do? Well, I didn't get, get kicked, kicked out. out. I got, like, escorted out. Oh, or asked next, to leave. Next to LA Convention Center? Yeah. They were like, uh, well, I had a... What issue. did you do? I had an issue with the manager. Uh, I told him, I go, you need to cut these shorts differently on these ladies. It's just not flattering to their bodies anymore. And he's like, I'm like, who do you got designing this stuff? Jane Fonda? And he's like, look, man, we can't have you in here. I'm like, I didn't even drink anything yet. I told I did a couple stories. <laughs> You're against then, the shorts at Hooters. Yeah, they got the That's worst the cuts. They this. got the worst cut in the world. You could have the best body in the world, and those shorts will make you look like a, a six-year-old, like a I feel like Tanzanian most people kid. really like the Hooters outfits. I, you know, listen, when he said that, I immediately agreed with him. And I feel like I thought about this a long time. I just didn't have the courage to come out and say it. Yeah. So I'm glad you're willing to put yourself out there. Yeah. I yeah. think they should wear boy shorts in there. They should switch it up. <laughs> boy shorts? Yeah, okay. it's old school now. Uh, let me just well. say one thing about Kamikaze. We met some great fans there. Yes. Uh, the panel was awesome. Thanks for everyone that came out at 10 a.m. Because, I, I mean, it was the night after Halloween. Yes. Half of them were probably hungover. But we yeah. met some great fans. And not only the Schmoes, but Box Office Breakdown. Uh, yeah. Andre Cabrera, mm-hmm. awesome guy from Arizona. Hey. Yep. Super cool. Big fan. It's cool to meet the fans. It's always nice. Yes. Always, always nice. It's really, really so, cool. So let's actually talk to our fans why they listen to us yes. for the numbers of this week. My oh, posture. Man. This was like yeah. a photo finish. <laughs> it's been a very intense morning, yeah. everyone else. Still a tie. <laughs> so <laughs> it is not a tie. Mm-hmm. We've decreed as of now that this is not a tie. And number, we're going to start with number five. Not expecting this at all. Book of Life. Yeah. Hanging on to the number five spot, um, bringing in $8.3 million. Just above it at number four with $8.8 million. We've got Gone Girl. Hmm. Not going away. Nope. Not going away. <laughs> People love it. Number three, Fury. We knew those were two were going to be right next to each other. We've got $9.1 million. Yeah. Now it gets down to this is where the got. top two socks. I was looking at an O and five this weekend. This was yes. You yeah, were I looking was. at. It. I was threw, looking at like <laughs> Belichick. I reached down, grabbed that red flag, and threw it on the field. Yep. So those right of you who you looked at last night's numbers, if you were looking at the box office last night, they had number two going to Ouija. Mm-hmm. But as of this morning, number two is not. 
going to be deeper, going to Nightcrawler, <laughs> who as of right now on Box Office Mojo is at 10.4 million. And number one, JTE. Everyone Ouija. bow down. I'm th- I, I'm, Ouija. I'm, I'm going ha- to put this under protest, this one, until no the real numbers come out at like 4.30 this afternoon. They said Things th- can change. It's the weekend is over. The okay. numbers are in. We do. The show okay. has started. <laughs> okay. I think we have to go by our <laughs> yeah. show time. Yeah, okay. okay. As and right that's now. what it Fair is. Enough. Fair enough. So it's 3-3 three, three between me and JT now. You all laughed me out of the studio when I put Ouija number one. <laughs> I, I apologize. And here I but am. But I'm really glad that you've been stuck. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, but if JT wins, you gotta you got to get a Twitter handle. Oh, that's and, if, and, we, and if we tie at five, you have to get a Twitter handle and wear the mask. Oh, that's good. Yeah, at the that'd, same time. That'd be great if we tied I just feel like this isn't fair because so far I've missed a third of the weeks that yeah. we've done this contest. Well, listen, Ellis was your replacement and he did host Box yeah. Office Sunday for like a year. <laughs> he did. So it was somebody, you know, who knew what he was doing. Yeah, I agree. I did not condone him betting for me. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> anyway, so as it stands, three to three. Good job, guys. Yeah, yes. let me, you GTE. know, let's talk a little bit about this list. Book of Life. I think the reason why it's staying strong is not only is it Halloween, and it's a Halloween kids-themed film about yes. the Day of the Dead. It's also the only and, kids' and, film. Exactly. And it's the only kids' film, which mm-hmm. is not going to be the case soon. No. But I think that's really why it's staying in the top five. And I, I, yeah, it surprised me. It was a really cute movie. Um, it surprised me, too, but I think it really does just point to the fact that it's the only one genre besides Alexander and the terrible, horrible, very bad, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. And this one does go for the holiday season, mm-hmm. uh, but is bringing out all the kids, all their parents, all the families are going to be able to see this as opposed to everything else, which is kind of scary or depressing. Yeah, yeah. correct. Speaking of uh, scary and kind of depressing, <laughs> number four, Gone Girl. Yeah. Uh, I actually, you know, before we talk about Nightcrawler, I went to go see it this weekend and I got to the theater about like an hour early. So I got my ticket and I said, yeah, I'm going to theater hop a little bit. And nothing was really playing. I had, I, I've seen everything. So I was like, you know what? Gone Girl's playing. I'm going to go watch that for like 30 minutes. It was sa- Saturday night around eight, nine o'clock and it was packed. Yep. And I said, wow, this thing is not dying down. Do you think it's a good repeat watch? I do. I saw it twice. Some people, yeah. I mean, I would say that. I'm going to watch it again, but not in the theaters. See, because that's where I think a lot of people are at. Are they are they really enjoy it? They're looking to get it when it comes out. Right. This isn't like Guardians of the Galaxy that people were like, "No, I need yes. to watch this five times in a row." So the fact that it keeps pulling people out well, week think, after week. I think what it is is say you know because not a lot, not every guy in the world only has one girlfriend. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> so they're going to take, like, if they're trying to narrow down, like, the five girls they're dating into the one they want, yeah. they're trying to weed out the psycho. <laughs> That's good. You and know they're going to take him to Gone Girl. Huh. Yeah. That's the it, weeding out of the Yeah, because, like movie. I said, when, you know, when the girl starts doing crazy stuff, they look in, they look over, like, side eye into the girl's eye. And if she's got that look in her eyes, that's the last time I'll see her. I really want to disagree with him, yeah, but, but I kind of do agree sense. with him. Yeah. It makes sense. It's, 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 it's a theory. I do it's not condone stone. multiple girlfriends. It's, a, it's the poofonomics. Yeah, if you if you take a girl to see that, and afterwards she's like, that, she did it right. Yeah, then I'm like, all right. <laughs> Cut her off. I'm like, I'm going to go to the bathroom real Okay, quick. so what happens if you take <laughs> yeah, a girl? Back. What happens if you take a girl to Fury, number three? Um, How hmm. does this play out as a girl from a movie? Well, I feel like Brad Pitt's in it, so she's probably going to want to see it. It could be him, you know, doing a yo-yo for two hours. Yeah, of course. Down with it. Well, it's making most of its money right now. It's Brad Pitt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's making most of its money off of middle America right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, nobody on the coast has seen it anymore. It's done with. So middle America's like, yeah, let's go see Fury for a little while. You know, it's like uh, I equate it to, to more or less like when it first opens, it's like a hot club. You know, everybody goes mm-hmm. and things like mm-hmm. that. Now it's like middle American money is equivalent to like a hot club, like just doing like bar mitzvahs on the weekends now. <laughs> so it's fitting for Fury. Um, yeah, definitely. Bar mitzvahs the yeah. weekend for Fury works I, I, out. Wow. Well, it's staying up there. Now let's yeah. get into the two interesting movies. We're talking about Nightcrawler <laughs> and Ouija. Yeah, which, you know, obviously number two is now Nightcrawler. Yes. Uh, I which saw it seen, this right? weekend. Yeah, did you see it? Uh, not yet. Sarah? I have not seen it oh, okay. either. I've heard wonderful things. It's getting 93% yeah. on Rotten Tomatoes. Everyone's loving it. I mean, we were so invested in it that our top five list later today is going to be more about Nightcrawler than about Ouija. That's true. I know. And we just 
it's still at eight percent. No one likes this yeah. movie. It's, it needs it, to <clears throat> drop off. Listen, I'm telling you what it is. Look at these numbers. The number one movie made almost eleven million dollars. That is not a good amount for a number one movie. No, the whole mm-hmm. the whole weekend itself was the, was horrible. Well, we talked about that. The yeah, Halloween it's the ho- is actually falling. It's the Halloween effect. Year, exactly, and it's that's why I put my neck out there and put Ouija number one because I I knew Nightcrawler was not going to pull big numbers. It, look it. I, I don't think Middle America is going to watch on a chart and be like, oh, I need to go see that. Yeah, you were correct. The people who went saw us began were the coast. The yeah. East Coast and West Coast, all the film buffs, all the people who just like Absolutely. watch an Oscar race, they all it, went saw Nightcrawler. It's, it's a beefed up, it's a beefed up uh, a specialty movie for the most part. Mm-hmm. Open Road acquired it for like very little money, mm-hmm. put some good promotion behind it. And, you know, they, I think it was $8 million budget or something like that. And they made their budget already. And they'll make their money on it. If this was a normal weekend and if it wasn't Halloween, it still probably would have made maybe only a few million more. I don't think it would have made that much more money. You're probably right. Well, like I said, you know, Ouija itself is what Bloomhouse does. Gangbusters for the first two weeks. Then it's like equates to like a hot chick with no job. She'll go to Okay, no, 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 no. What I want to talk about next is before we get into our international numbers, I want to talk to me about the biggest surprise of the weekend for me, which was the huge drop off of John Wick. Ah, that's disappointing. Dropping all the way to number six. I personally just feel really bad for this movie. Don't feel too bad because listen, it's number six at eight point, almost about eight million dollars. It should have crapped two million away from the number one film. True. It, you you gotta remember that these numbers are That's skewed are by the weekend. Close. It's actually really yeah. That's a very yeah, good point. So thing. it's only two million away from the first place. I mean that's nothing in the box office. It's just a really good movie and. It's dropping off this list. People are already forgetting about it. And it's about to be swarmed by a bunch of highly publicized, huge films. I yeah. just think it's going to get completely forgotten. Oh, it's going to get buried. Anything that's oh, yeah, coming out this with. weekend is mm-hmm. getting buried. It's over um, with. <laughs> it's over with. <laughs> and it's sad because that was a good movie. Yeah. I went and saw it. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I think Keanu Reeves did a great job. And I think that unless it takes in that cult following that mm-hmm. is going to buy this when it comes out on DVD... It's gone. It's I think, a rotten movie. I think Keanu is not the draw he used to be. I mean, when's the last time he no. actually carried a, a successful film like himself? I'm telling you, he's got the siphon gas face. Nobody wants to see him anymore. <laughs> also, and, you know, bring that back to Nightcrawler. Jill Hall is not a name that brings people to the theaters in droves. No, absolutely I not. I mean, no. he, his last film, Prisoners, did pretty good, but I mean, you had Hugh Jackman. Hugh people who are t- yeah. Exactly. People who are going to his movies are normally going for who he's starring with. They're exactly. not really going for him. Not to say anything against him. I think everyone does respect him as an actor and yep. he's well liked he just doesn't have the pull i think he I, picks really good totally movies agree. yeah he, he picks really good uh you know material i know you know his movies are, are very watchable source code i thought was great another low budget movie mm-hmm. um you know uh, the your favorite movie um what's my favorite movie the Please cowboy that broke back mountain oh oh really yeah. i actually do on the screenplay to that movie but oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right, so yeah. All right, you guys. We're going on to international numbers before we talk about, we talk about Jake Birdman. Gyllenhaal some more. Oh, do you want to talk about Birdman yeah. a little bit? Uh, yeah, it's, it's doing great. And, and St. Vincent mm-hmm. is still doing really well. Yeah, Birdman is... And addicted. It's gonna. Mm-hmm. They're saying they're really going to push it for a wider release, I believe, next week because it's been killing in these limited theaters. I think it has really great word of mouth. I think that mm-hmm. it was a good competition for... It's interesting to me to see the people who are talking about... Birdman, who are talking about Whiplash, yeah, and I think it's the same crowd who is talking about Interstellar. Besides Frame Mass, like, yeah, correct. I think it should be opened in wide release. I think it will sit well with the masses. Um, so I think it's a really smart decision. And St. Vincent almost didn't fall off at all. It made like the same exact amount of money that it did last week. Yeah, well, did this week. I think it actually might have been. It according been, to right now, mm-hmm. it's up. Point one yeah. percent. Yeah, wow. it's very close. It was like seven point eight and seven point seven five or something crazy. That's that's it's a good a, hold. Once again, it's an amazing hold. Two and a half million dollars away from being. But if you do one. look at Birdman, it went up. Yeah. eighty one point nine. The oh, buzz yeah. around that movie is really strong. Well, look out, Oscar season. I think it's really gonna make some noise. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. All right, so let's go on to international oh, numbers. Favorite part of the show. <laughs> yep. Your favorite part is the numbers <laughs> or the game after? I love both. All right. It's fascinating. Right? So. Let's talk about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which opened in uh, China. That's not. There's huge size. Huge size, guys. Well, you guys are going to disagree then, because it led the foreign box office this weekend and earned $34.7 million, Jesus. which that's brings the international total to $244 million. And now the movie's earned $434.5 million worldwide. 
I never saw this movie, so I can't. <laughs> oh, you see it? Thank God. I was too scared. You're okay. I was like, I'm gonna. Mm. Uh-huh. It's the worst. <laughs> it, some really it, nice actors. In it man, was I pretty just... bad, but I've seen worse. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Turtles three is still the worst out of all the turtle movies. Um, you know, it comes down to what I said that when this movie first came out. It's a brand. Oh, of it's, it's got you. It's got the ticket sold before it even came out, and something like this that's been around this long and has like you know fruit snacks toys commercial mm-hmm. i mean pizza, it's everywhere pizza, pizza. papa john's jumped on board and I, I unless this thing it would have had to been the worst movie ever for it to not be a success and while it's not the worst movie ever it's still pretty bad it's i've heard yeah. it's really horrible which is why i'm not adding to this 434.5 million dollars which i don't think they need my help on and it was huge mm-hmm. in china so wow yeah, yeah of it's course they don't cry yeah that and they don't they don't even <laughs> translate it they just speak American. They don't care what's going on. <laughs> I'm okay. not, you know, I'd be upset they if I saw this movie change. in China because there's not enough karate in that movie. Yeah. They barely use the martial arts. I did not see it, so I can't comment well, on the, ch- the, the actual... Chinese are, the Chinese are moving away from the martial arts now. Sure. Yeah, they don't like it anymore. It's in the it's in their field. It's huge, big mm. budget, lots of press, lots of merchandise. It's going to do well in China. Yeah, I'm chucking All the right, poster. let's talk about the Maze Runner, <laughs> also <laughs> off to a solid start in China. Maze Runner this weekend. The movie opened to $13.7 million and added $23.8 million for a new total of $208 million. Wow. Well, and wow. so, over worldwide, it's banked $300 million. Yeah, it did about almost 100 here. Not even. Mm-hmm. I didn't see it. Did anybody here see it? I saw Maze Runner. Mm-hmm. That's I right. I looked that. She likes the dudes liked in it. it. I, I liked it. Uh, <laughs> the dudes. Yeah, the dudes in it. Is he from Teen Wolf or he something? He is from Teen Wolf. Oh, I do is. like right. him. The movie was... I don't... I didn't hate it. Do I need to see it again? Not really. I wasn't excited to see the sequel, and that's not what you want out of a franchise film. Yeah. But, they would have let a match in the theater over there with all the gel in people's hair. Forget about it. <laughs> the whole thing would have went into flames. <laughs> Okay, you're in the wrong decade. All right, Gone Girl continued to impress the international box oh, office. Man. Thriller took in 15.3 million. So this bringing the total to 142.4, and it had the strongest holds were in South Korea. It was off a light 10% to 4.1 million dollars. Hmm. Yeah, uh, this has got to be. It's going to be Fincher's biggest film. I think right? it is. I think it just went past. I think it. it just went past. It just beat Argo, which is obviously Affleck's movie. But oh, really? Yeah. Wow, mm-hmm. it beat Argo. Just, yeah, it just went past that. Yeah, man. Word of mouth. This movie's it's gonna, uh, get, it's gonna get a best picture nod. No, no question. You need to find out what the translation for that movie is. I am so curious what Gone Girl would be. Yeah, that it's can, called that David, w- David Fincher's pockets have a lot of money in it. Is this part of the, the quiz? I that was a social network. Yeah, huh? Is this part of the quiz? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's just debating. I can't watch a movie now without wondering what's called in our country. Yeah, no, it's it's yeah, it's mind boggling now. It's great. It's the game, and we'll segue right into it. Foreign titles. Yes, for, let's uh, do it. Crazy American. All right, movies. Marissa, our engineer, is going to join in this week. Yeah, uh, she is. From now on, because she's basically proven that she's better than me. Yeah, she's better than probably yeah, both of us. Yeah, she's actually I'm really scared. good. And she she just hangs out in the library on the weekends. Marissa, are you ready? I'm ready. You guys are playing me up, so if if, if I mess <laughs> up this week, then oh well. Okay, so right, our first go. one is out of Japan. Oh yes. Uh, Wreck It Ralph <laughs> is called Sugar Rush. Sugar ah. Rush. Oh, was that the name of the game? Interesting. The I think that was the name of the game in the movie. That she wrote in. In Japan, again, Napoleon Dynamite oh my God. Oh, we're going. is called Bus Man. Bus Man. Bus, bus man. man. Bus Man. Yeah, like a yellow school bus man. Yeah, I get that. I'm just trying to figure out how they would even come to that title. Oh, that would be like a Jerome Bettis movie. All yeah. right. <laughs> now we go to our friends in Portugal. Forgetting Sarah Marshall okay. is called What a Nice Pair of Roller Skates. What a Nice Pair of Roller Skates. Yeah. Are we supposed to pick which one's false or true again? <laughs> yeah. That, that In sounds like Portugal, a... again, okay. the graduate is called Young Man Seduced by Hot Middle-Aged Woman. That's basically just a description of the movie. Mm-hmm. Is that all of them? Yeah. Once again, okay. Wreck It Ralph, Sugar Rush. Ra- and we're Rush. picking which one is false. false. Yes. Okay. False. So three of these are true. Yes. Mm. That is correct. Okay. So we have. I'm going to go it again. Go, go yes, again. Yes. One yeah. more time. Wreck It Ralph is Sugar Rush. Okay. Napoleon Dynamite is Bus Man. Okay. Mm-hmm. Forgetting Sarah Marshall is a nice pair of roller skates. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> and a graduate is a young man seduced by hot middle-aged women. 
That roller skate one would be perfect for Boogie Nights. Oh, yeah. I can't believe that's I just, not Boogie Nights. I mean, <laughs> normally, you can kind of figure out where they might grab it from. Yeah. And <clears throat> both on Napoleon Dynamite, I mm-hmm. don't understand the bus reference. Yeah. Maybe I'm just not remembering this movie that yeah. well. And on, I don't remember any roller skates. You got to remember, Finstock's coming up with this fake one also. So he's very mischievous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say Sugar Rush. It's, it's the one I think that makes the most sense. So therefore, I'm going to make. I'm going to say it's fake. What do you say, Sarah? I'm going to go with <sighs> the roller skates. Okay, I think Marissa. Roller skates uh, is false. I was going to say roller skates. All right, Marissa, no, no, that's fine. You team. can both have. All right, yeah. I was going to say roller Tell skates. You can like join me against them in <laughs> okay. later too. Yeah, Sarah, actually, you need a little help. Unfortunately, all wrong. No. Yeah, Which the graduate one? young man seduced by hot little middle-aged woman Damn is it. not the case. Curse. It's like young man deals with incest or something Where like that. Where are the roller skates? Uh, you know, where? what's the bus? The bus man. <laughs> good good counter argument there. The, the thing is, uh, <laughs> None of those make sense. 20th Century Fox issued a, an apology to like the Napoleon Dynamite producers and everybody. Why? Because they were like, we don't know why it's called this. We wish we knew it, but we couldn't figure it out. And they have total car blanche to name whatever they feel like it. And they were just like, we're really sorry. It has nothing to do with a bus. <laughs> trying to think, he goes the to school. Only thing yeah, I can think school of, bus. The only yeah. thing I can think of is like, they think he's slow or whatever. Oh. And they probably have bus. him on like the short bus. I mean, short bus would have been a better name than bus man, but other than that. <laughs> yeah, that's, it really does not make any sense. I feel like if I moved and, there, I would find out why. <laughs> well, yeah. The, the bus means something different over there. Right. I don't know All why. Right. So, well, no, like, wow, we, just, we put, got a, another a person zero. in the mix, and they still didn't pick the uh, correct zero. one. Oh, Jeez. horrible. Well, let's move on to our top five list. Normally, our top five lists Damn, kind of so. go with our number one movie. So, the last week when we had BG, we did board game movies. This week, because we thought about this last night, and before the points were rearranged, we we're talking about Nightcrawler. So, this week is based more off that top five Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah, this movies. is an interesting list because, like we said earlier, he's not like the main guy usually. He's, yeah. He's kind of like, you know, a part of an ensemble. He's exactly. definitely a star and he's been in huge films. Yeah. But, but what's the one movie he really tried to carry himself as a superstar? Prince of Persia? Yeah. Not a very good Did movie. Did not work. Tanked. Okay, Did better than John, not... John Carter. Well, though. let's talk about True. our list this week. And Hercules. Um, or Kevin Lutz, or Kevin Lutz, whatever the hell you call him. <laughs> Just I'm rubbing off. All right, number five. <laughs> what I like about this list, we're going to get into, is it spans all genres. Yep. But number five, Prisoners. Mm. $61 million. Mm-hmm. My company did that. Right. Also on this yeah, list, the most recent of all of the other ones. That's right. That was last year. Mm-hmm. Number four, Jarhead. Wow, with Sam Mendes. 62.6 million. It's a good flip. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now we're going we're gonna to get to your guys' favorite. Number three, Prince of Persia. Poof. Oh, come on, it was... <laughs> he does go poof in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, he wants to go back in time, he, it goes poof. Flies in the sand and stuff like that. <laughs> it's, it's a really great film. Yeah. Uh, Fantastic. Nine, oh, this is where we're actually going to get a little bit... There's a little bit of debate. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because that's off... Prince of Persia comes in number three off the adjusted numbers. Mm-hmm. So if we go off the regular numbers, it's 90.7. And number two is Broke Rock Mountain. Your favorite. My my favorite on this list, <laughs> which is eighty three. So hmm. there's a debate if we're gonna go with the adjusted numbers or the actual numbers, because you've got Brokeback Mountain one hundred three slash eighty three, and you've got Prince of Persia ninety two point seven slash ninety point seven. The crazy part about uh, <laughs> Brokeback Mountain was it was a script written about in the seventies. And the original stars were supposed to be Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris. <laughs> okay. But they did it. They, it's, no. Yeah. That's not, not the kind of fighting I want them to do. That's not the kind of fighting I want those two doing. Stop. <laughs> it is a good screenplay. I really enjoy that movie. Our list has, there's a lot of different things about this. We're yeah. also discluding the number two list on Box Office Mojo because number two could have possibly argued gone to City Slickers. Yeah, yeah it could have. But Such we're not counting one. it. He's like it he's like have... the son of one of the guys on there. Uh, well, he was nah, he was like uh, Billy Crystal's like keeper boy or something like that. Yeah. So you guys, you could argue that that should rightfully be number two. We're just we're not including it this week. It yeah. has 124 million, and so instead we're going to number one, the day after tomorrow, obviously. 
Ugh. That was a huge movie when it, it came out. It was huge. I remember when that came out. Why Everyone did you was, ugh? Yeah. Did you not like Were you surprised? It was not horrible. It wasn't great. I, I feel like you have, you have a lot of beef with a lot of his <laughs> movies. I like Prisoners. Oh, the prison was good, but I mean, day after tomorrow, it's Ron, uh, what was his name? <laughs> Roland Emmerich. I think yeah. I said it right. Yeah, <laughs> I think he I actually said it right. He destroys America and everything he does. <laughs> yeah, and this was like before you know 2012, where he basically was just doing the same thing over and over again. He just gives terrorists like more more ways to do things. They're like, all right, let's see if we could. Uh, <laughs> he did know, have the White House movie. Right? Yeah, let's see if we could whatever it's called, the like global uh, White House global down? warming. Oh, the global whole, warming. The whole world. Uh, and again, while Jake Gyllenhaal is in his movie, it is very much an assemble, but. I would argue that he's one of the main leads, along with um, Dennis Quaid. Dennis Quaid, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's a hot uh, chicken in it, too. Also, you know what's funny? Day After Tomorrow, Brokeback Mountain, you could change the titles of those movies, and they both kind of make sense. Yeah. Yeah. You could use Brokeback Mountain <laughs> Brokeback for Brokeback could movie. be called Day After Tomorrow. <laughs> you could have crawled Nightcrawlers, Brokeback, Brokeback Mountain. Mountain could have been called... We're just going to search them all Nightcrawlers, up. Yes. Yeah, Nightcrawlers, Brokeback Mountain. John Wick, <laughs> a- <laughs> a.k.a. Brokeback Mountain. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm gonna see what Brokeback Mountain's called in uh, in China. I gotta see. That they be probably, nice. see oh, they probably want bananas in that. Please include this in yeah. next week's game. I want every country's name yes. for Brokeback Mountain next week. You know what? That's a really week. good one. I'm gonna, if I could find that, we're gonna definitely stay do tuned. It. We're gonna try for that next week, guys. But also talking about things for next week, upcoming films. Mm. Oh, this is a big one. Do 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 do. This is a huge weekend. Huge, huge weekend. Huge weekend. Interstellar. Yeah, Nolan coming back after uh, yeah. what some people are disappointed with Dark Knight Rises, me included. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. I like the movie, just didn't love it. Um, and Inception, this is first, I mean, since Inception, this is first, you know, uh, what was the word I want to say? Original property. He okay. came up with the story himself. Mm hmm. And he's very inventive with stories. Look at his first film, Memento. I thought his Yeah, I have a story about that show, one. Memento. What's that? I thought his brother came up with it. Oh, they came up with the story together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But I mean, you're always excited when he does something original because look at Inception, how new and different it was. And like I was saying, his first one, Memento, the way he structured. I have a story about Memento. Do you know? Well, basically, I mean, Nolan's career is basically a fluke. What town? Yeah, look, here's the deal. They, They shot Memento and they didn't really have enough money. So they hired this editor who was like sketchy. He okay. cut the. I'm telling you what it is. He it cut was the, independent. I film. feel like you he, were just trying to destroy films. No, this podcast. No, he cut the he cut the movie backwards. He had no idea what he was doing. They, <laughs> all the producers watched. You the, can't just take good films and like cut them apart so they fit your story. It was he was an editor who knew nothing. So basically, <laughs> they, they would watch the thing like, "What did you do here?" They fired him on the spot. They hired a real editor. He cut the movie the, the way it was supposed to be done forward. Yeah, and it was it was worse. <laughs> Nolan's like, we got to go back and use this guy's cut. You're okay. saying that whole the whole concept of the way that movie like was yeah. hailed for was actually yeah because it was just an idiot editor. Someone's vision. He just <laughs> so basically also, also this is uh, Nolan's first movie since um, first movie without Wally Pfister since uh, oh. the following, which is in ninety nine. That's right. Yeah, yeah, that was his first like indie indie film. Well, Wally was doing Transcendence. <laughs> but anyway, I think uh, I'm going to be the first one to say that. I'm not really. I don't really care about this movie. What? Okay. Really? Yeah. I don't care. I don't really care about it. What, what makes I you say I actually that? can kind of agree with you. Oh my god! I, where, no. where am I right now? Okay, Honestly, this is what I have to say. Like, it I, looks like it's gonna be beautiful. Yeah. I kind of felt the same way about Gravity last year, where I was like, "Oh, that's beautiful. It's this is gonna be another beautiful movie." I get it. It's I'm two hours I mean, and fifty minutes. I'm going. I'm seeing it in seventy millimeter. Yep. I'm seeing it really yep. like. I'm trying to be there for part of me is just like. What is it that is it the trailers? Is it just like you don't know enough about the movie? What you saw doesn't excite you? I'm curious. The most exciting thing that I've found about this movie is that they actually made this like scientific discovery while making it, and that they were trying to. I think they were trying to do a visual representation of like a black hole, okay. and they were like really sourcing out like finding people who knew what they're talking about, okay. and then the combining of like their computers and their digitals and all of their information, they actually made some scientific discoveries. That they're going to be able to publish. Sounds like, like the end of that's Howard the, the most ex- Yeah, <laughs> but like that's I the mean, most exciting news I've heard about this film. Okay, like I was like, wow, that's actually really cool. Like a film inspiring research papers. Great. I'm just like I, I'm kind of I love Matthew McConaughey. I'm kind of sick of him at the moment. What? I know. No, no I think I, I think I, I think I, you're right. I think he's a little oversaturated. And the way is the same way. Where I'm just kind of feel like I kind of feel like how when they made American Hustle last year and they just shoved right. a bunch of America's darlings like mm-hmm. in favorite people mm-hmm. in a movie and they were like, here, yep, go all we'll see this, and they kind of shoved it at you. I feel like Interstellar's being shoved in my face. Why? Like <sighs> if you don't see this, you are not a movie fan. And yeah. so I'm going to see it. I'm seeing it in the best format I can. I'm not. I'm sh- 
oh, well, I am. I'm seeing yeah, seven millimeter. Yeah. But I'm well, truthfully not, like, not that excited about okay. it. It's Sorry. not like he stacked the movie with superstars. Yes, McConaughey just came off the Oscar and he's the lead. You got Anne Hathaway, who I'm sorry is like Anne famous. Hathaway, Jessica Chastain. But is Chastain a star, or yes. is she just well known? Yeah, yeah. amongst the she, film no, people. No, 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 no. Oh, she's she's a, star. a Zero Dark Thirty. She's a star. What did she? What did she care besides Zero Dark Thirty? She's remember, just like but... she's always yes. in the Topher press. Grace she's is becoming in the like the new. He is in the like, Grace. Topher, Topher Grace is in, in it. Movie. He's not a pole. Uh, the other guy who's in the ship. No, I can't remember. His it's name. a Nolan movie. You could put anybody in it. It's That's gonna, exactly. It, it just Why is what it is. You're but going I mean, to see it for I, Nolan. I feel like they're trying to tell me like these are the best actors right now that you got. You need some to of them see. are the best actors. Right I'm not. Now. The Dark Knight was. I good. just feel like I'm being force fed. The Dark Knight Rises solid. or whatever with, with uh, Heath. Yeah, but th- that's the no, that's it's the only time I watch that movie. Once the uh, uh, Joker takes off, I don't watch the movie anymore. It's the end of the movie for me. It's only five minutes, like after that. No, nah, it's okay. like a half hour. No, the no, you know, this whole storyline like of the Two Faces stuff him. like that. We'll see what I have to say next week. I'm going to go well, see it. Right. I'm trying to have an open mind. Let me just say, Nolan is one of the best filmmakers working today. I and agree. I, I just said see it's it going to be just, beautiful. No, I agree, and that's one of the reasons why I'm going to go see it is because not only do I love the fact that they use practical effects, like the stuff they do, they actually shot with screens. They didn't use as much CGI mm-hmm. or like special effects. It's great technique. Next to James technology. Cameron, he's the most he's the most yeah. visual t- technical guy there is in the movie business. Well, All right, guys. We'll, well talk let's about keep going week. on. We have so much to say about that. But also, Big Hero 6. Uh, this one I'm excited about. Yeah, I'm not so excited. But go ahead. <laughs> I want to know what it happened to awesome. Big Hero 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Why is it named, why is it named 6 too. right now? It's the you same thing with the Leonard the Bill Cosby you have to movie. You see it. <laughs> oh, Leonard Part 6. Yeah, it was Leonard Part 6. What happened to 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5? What are you Give are you it a in his house? Maybe 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are in the movie, and Big Hero 6 is just the most important. Oh, I see what you're saying. He should be just named Big Hero, but they can't do that because there was a controversy with a baby in China. That, <laughs> no, we're not going into this story. Yeah, he no. was he was shipped in a sandwich. <laughs> There's a wait, a baby was shipped. A baby you was didn't shipped hear in him a sandwich. About this earlier. Because they had too many kids, and they're like, "We gotta get rid of the kid." This and they're like, <laughs> "The guy owned like a sandwich truck, <laughs> and he sw- and he put the baby okay. in between the I'm processed sorry meats." To so all we're like, "Can I get a baby back rib sandwich?" Yeah. <laughs> oh, I got a baby back rib sandwich. Right. A- Just Google the story. It's <laughs> I'm bizarre. Sorry. It's I completely apolog- bizarre. Wait, it's true. Both yeah. of you. It's like the girl who spent the week in KFC. I now have her. to apologize to everyone for the two of you. I'm sorry that that <laughs> he got away with that story. A baby sandwich. Next, you guys, the theory of everything coming out. This movie, I didn't know much about. Um, I watched the yeah, trailer either. yesterday. Yeah, I think up. it looks really good. I w- want to see it. It's interesting. Um, indie flicks, Stephen Hawking, his yeah. life yeah. story. It's got some good people in it. It's supposedly very well acted. It's getting good reviews, but I feel like it's kind of just coming out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. you know, Scott Mance is the only person I know who actually, you know, Scott Mance who hosts his profiles on his mm-hmm. network, which is a great show. <clears throat> he told me it was fantastic. And mm-hmm. That put it on my radar right away. And then seeing the trailers and some of the reviews that have come out in early word, I'm like, this movie kind of came out of nowhere, and I'm really excited to see it. I have awesome. an interesting thing about to say about that. <laughs> it was just, this is a great story. <laughs> it's just so good. Not no, listen, this is amazing. So basically, uh, you ever heard of the Sadie Hawkins dance? Uh, just look, listen to me. Yes, I've heard so of the So some girl Hawkins asked me dance. the Sadie Hawkins dance when I was in like sixth grade. I didn't know really, really what it was. So my brother, you know, he's like, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, hey, I'm getting ready to go to this Sadie something dance. He's like, what do you mean, the Stephen Hawking dance? I'm like, who's that? He's like, you know, the guy who discovered the earth or whatever. I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> so I'm like, what, what does he do? So he showed me a picture and he was in the wheelchair and stuff. I was like, I got to dress up like this guy? He's like, yeah. He's like, that's what it's called, the Stephen Hawking dance. I was like, all right, let's go. So I'm like, where am I going to get a wheelchair from? He's like, go down to Nikki. You know, the guy, my neighbor downstairs, he fell down an elevator shaft when he was working at construction company so I went to I think you create stories so I will cut you off (laughs) and then when I don't they just get more ridiculous I went to the dance as Stephen Hawking and it 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 didn't go over that well (laughs) obviously all right you guys we're running both of you are running short on time so we have to get through our predictions for next week I'm gonna start because I always end and I'm thinking maybe that's part of my bad luck you think shush number five I'm gonna go with I'm going to drop it to number five, Fury. Oh, and okay. then number four, I'm going to keep it saying it Gone Girl. Because mm. I keep being wrong and thinking it's going to disappear, and it doesn't. It doesn't yeah. So I'm just going to like give in and say it's going to stay where it's at. Um, mm. Number three, Nightcrawler. Number two, Big Hero 6. Even though I kind of secretly want it to be number one, I think it's going to be number two. And number one, Interstellar. Yeah. For, Interstellar, sure. for sure. And they're pushing it so much. I feel like it's opening in so many theaters early 
And they have a 70 millimeter well, let me and 35. They're playing in the McDonald's. <laughs> let me ask you this. There's Are we counting the Wednesday grosses or just Friday to Sunday? We might have to debate this. I think we should just count the weekend. Because I don't think, I think when they release the report, they'll tell you like what it made on Wednesday and Thursday mm-hmm. or just Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah. Good. I think we minus that from the weekend. Yes. All right, I agree I'm with that. I'm still giving it number one. Okay. okay. I'm still giving it number one. What about you guys? I am going to go with, uh, I think Gone Girl stays at number five. Uh, it was at number four. Yeah, but it's so stay in the top. I meant the top five. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Just the Brad, to Brad, Brad Pitt tank movie at number four. Okay. okay. <laughs> I love. I never call it Fury. Um, like Brad Pitt tank movie. We got. I think you know, Nightcrawler. I think it'll stay. I think it'll get a little more word of mouth and, and people go check it out. I think people who wanted to check it out on Halloween couldn't because they were like walking their kids around the neighborhood getting candy or something. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with number two, Interstellar. Ah. Oh. I don't think it's going to bust number one. I think this movie is going to do like 50. It is three hours 49 long. to $50 million. And I think Big Hero 6 could make 54 to 56. I think he, he does have some good points. Like if you look mm. at what Gravity came out with next last year, or in my opinion, like American Hustle, those were in like the 50s, 60s. But mm. then if you're looking at Christopher Nolan films like Dark Knight, that's bringing in Just the name hundreds Nolan. of millions. Just so the name it's Nolan. not skewing towards chicks. Air. Chicks, don't want, chicks who, who are not big mm. movie fans do not want to see this movie. But... Most animated films are normally in like the 40s, so that's true. I think that but this is that's Big Hero Six. <laughs> it was written by a guy who had an infatuation with uh, blow up dolls as well. No, <laughs> stop. All right, GT, please give me your predictions. Oh, a kid's version of a blow up doll. All right, here Come we go. On. <laughs> number five, I'm going Gone Girl. Okay, uh, I'm gonna put number five. I think, like you said, it's gonna stay in top five. And it's gonna be really tight with Fury at number four. Those two are gonna just I those know, two could flip flop very easily. And but I'm gonna stick with what I originally wrote down here. Number three, Nightcrawler. Uh, again, I don't think it opened very good this weekend. Even if it wasn't Halloween, I don't think it would have opened that great. But it's gonna be just enough to beat Fury because it's pulling from the same crowd. Number two, I'm gonna go Big Hero Six because that's I feel like I don't know what the big the big draw is that inflatable guy. Like, I just don't see kids it's running getting, to him. Oh, I think kids are running. It's whether or not the parents want to spend exactly. another weekend dealing with their kids who they just gave a whole weekend to for Halloween. I think and the now parents, parents want to have a weekend. Exactly. And I think that's why they're going to get some sitters and they're going to go see Interstellar with McConaughey, Hathaway. Hathaway will bring the girls. McConaughey will bring, you know, the guys. Yeah. No one's going to bring the film geeks. Yeah. There we go. Boom. I'm definitely on board with you for this too. So those were our predictions. Send us your guys' predictions. Now... Everyone knows we do the show for the fans. Of course yeah. we do. Thank you, guys. It's all about you You're guys. You're awesome. <clears throat> Let's start this off with our winner. Yeah. We had a contest oh, last week yes. for a Kenny. wonderful t-shirt. It's best Kenny t-shirt. the Tiger. It's the best t-shirt around. <laughs> it's Kenny the Tiger. I guess it is. Um, and this award is going to Aaron Brooke Naylor. Yes. Yeah. You win. He's a, he's We're a, going to ship he's this a to great schmobile guy. He always comments always doing something fantastic Mm -hmm. he deserves the shirt i mean even though you think the shirt's a piece of junk it's not (laughs) i'm gonna sign it in there's just tape on it to hold it together but it's not silver outliner yeah he had a great comment about uh (laughs) yes i I wrote a tiger in zimbabwe like he man or something and (laughs) And he was like the guide yeah the guy tracing the steps marco polo yeah it was ridiculous and i and i turned out to be the guy or something (laughs) I'm going to brush up this shirt. We're going to sign it for you. I'm going to put some extra tape on it so it doesn't uh-huh. fall off during shipping. And, you know, do what you want with it, man. I think, you know, you can have a lot of fun. Show it to your buddies and, I don't know, wear it around the house or something eating cereal. So, Aaron, you're awesome. Thank you for your great story. The rest of you out there, please rate, comment, subscribe. Go to our YouTube channel, Schmoes No Podcast. Go to our website. Go to our Facebook page. Like us Follow also. us on Twitter. Yes. Follow them <laughs> on, Twitter. on Twitter. Well, no, we also have it. If me and JTE both win with five at the same time, she, Sarah's got to wear their mask and also get a Twitter handle. Like we pick her. We get to pick her. Uh, Twitter no. Handle. Yeah, we get no, to pick I a Twitter handle. No, I did not handle. agree to that. <laughs> did not yeah. agree to that. I did not agree <laughs> like I got, to like that. Like I had to pick Alicia's uh, outfit. Yeah, gear. For the, show. For the, um, for the my date. my handle. I brought in two close bins. Please, and a please let us know where they can find you. <laughs> uh, my handle is at Schmoes J T E. My, mine's at uh, at Bob Finstock. Poof. <laughs> and mine doesn't exist. So Yet. thank you guys. Yet. Tune in next week, please. Keep watching those numbers. Poof. 
our producers, Christian Harloff, Mark Ellis, and the entire Schmoes No Network crew. We would like to thank you for listening to Box Office Breakdown. Special thanks to Kevin Undergaro and Maria Menounos, the author of Every Girl's Guide to Diet and Fitness in stores now. To watch or listen to other Schmoes No Network episodes, get movie news, and join the conversation, be sure to visit schmoesno.com. And don't forget to rate and review this show on iTunes. I'm the Pit Boss, and this has been a presentation of Schmoes No Network.